Before I was ordained a deacon, I received an assignment to visit another Christian church that was not Catholic. So one Sunday, I chose a church close by and went to their service. I went into this church, looking around. I went to the side. I made I was towards the back. So I sat down. And the first thing I did when I started to pray was I noticed there was no kneelers. So I thought, OK, there's no kneelers. OK, I could sit and pray. But I'm a visual person. I like to look around. I like to see something, uh, something that gets me in the right frame to, to pray. And I didn't see anything. So when I looked to the front of the church, their church, I was looking for a symbol, something to show that they were Catholic, a cross, a crucifix, something to say this church is Christian. And I didn't see anything. What I saw kind of amazed me. When I looked at up at the sanctuary, for example, in our church, this is the sanctuary right here. Imagine where Father's sitting and deacon. There's a big piano. Where I'm standing talking right now, there's a drum set right in the middle there with the synthesizer. You had the bass players. You had guitars. I mean, it was set up for a concert. They had speakers. And I'm thinking, the whole sanctuary was filled up for a band. I'm thinking, this is odd, but when in Rome, do what the Romans do. So I slow down to I'll continue to see what's going on. So soon these people came out. They went up and saw how they fit between all this stuff. I don't know. But they started playing music. And it kind of turned into kind of like a Christian rock concert. And they played two songs. I mean, the songs weren't bad, but they were loud. It was not something you just go. And after they finished the second song, a gentleman came out, which I think was the pastor, from the side door. And the first thing he said was, let's hear it for the band. And everybody clapped and cheered. And, and I'm sitting there looking, going, something's not right. So when he came out to see everybody, he couldn't come up to the sanctuary because there's no room in the sanctuary for him. So the pastor basically introduced himself and then from there he ended up passing out a piece of paper and then a pencil for everybody and for the next half hour we did bible study i thought okay soon after that when he was finished he looks back and goes let's hear it for the band and goes back up and starts clapping and the band starts playing another two songs and after that service was over now being catholic it was kind of stunned me so as i was sitting in my seat reflecting I kind of, again, was looking around, and I thought, where was Jesus? Obviously, there's no room in the sanctuary. That's full of all the music equipment. Where is he? I could go to a concert anytime I want to go to a concert, right? If I want to go to Bible study, we have that here Monday nights, that Holy Spirit. So I mean, it wasn't a Bible study. I was here to see Jesus. So as I'm sitting up there, a guy sits next to me, and it turns out to be the pastor of this church. And he looks at me, and I look at him, and he says, well, I see you're new here. And I said, yes, I am. He goes, what did you think of our service? And that's when the Holy Spirit grabbed me. I asked him, where was the Eucharist? What was their focus? Did they receive communion? He smiled and said they only did communion once a month. I asked him, why would you not want to receive and walk with God every day versus once a month? You see, their communion is a symbol. Ours is truly the body of Christ. We are so blessed to be Catholic. We have a place to worship, give thanks, have our sins forgiven, hear the word, and receive our Lord every day if we want through the Eucharist. You see, the Eucharist is our way of saying yes to God, receiving him and walking with him as the Holy Spirit guides us through our journey toward heaven. We learn today the new Jerusalem needs no temple to be God's dwelling. God no longer dwells in a house of stone, but in the hearts of his people. I truly believe when we receive the Eucharist, God's presence shines brightly in us. We become a living tabernacle, a place where God can dwell. We are like the flame from a single candle, 
spreading the light throughout our world for all to see and hear the word. God has chosen some of us to be Eucharistic ministers. And with the guidance of the Holy Spirit, some of them go out and bring communion to those who cannot make it to Mass. You are true disciples. Going out to hospitals, retirement homes, convalescent homes, even to people who cannot make it out of their own homes due to health or age. You are disciples in action, bringing God's love and being there for them, allowing Jesus to walk with them on their journey. Many of them are seeing your presence as the face of heaven. So what is heaven to you? Last weekend, I helped set up a friend's four-year-old son's birthday party. Anybody ever hung out with a four-year-old for a little bit? It's pretty cool, huh? Four-year-olds are the most straightforward talkers. They're shy at first, but once they get to know you, oh, they love to talk. But it's cool because it's always honest things they ask, which I really like. But by talking to them, it reminded me of a book and later a movie called Heaven is for Real. It's about a three-year-old boy who had to have emergency surgery and temporarily died on the operating table. He regained his life, and four months later, the child began telling his mother and father things that he saw in heaven. Spoiler alert, just so you guys know. The top five things. Jesus and angels lifted him to heaven. Remember this saying? Where Jesus goes, so too do we. When he was lifted up toward heaven, he saw his mom in one room and his dad in another yelling at God. Now think about this. He's in the surgery room, mom's in the waiting room, and dad's at the chapel. He didn't know this at the time, I mean, but he see it. And what's cool about it, his dad was a preacher. And the dad told him the reason he was yelling at God was because he took his son from him. It was interesting. The, ja the child said he talked to Jesus, who had marks. He kept going to his dad, jumping, Dad, Jesus had marks. Jesus had marks. His dad's like, where were these marks? Right? And the kid goes like this. And then points to his feet. Jesus loves us so much, he still shows his marks. The child said he met his dad's grandpa, Pops, who told him stories about his dad when his dad was little. The dad's grandpa died 30 years before the child was born in an accident when his dad was young. Yet the stories his great-grandpa told the child about his dad were true. The dad laid out a bunch of pictures from the past across the table, and the child picked out Papa from all the pictures and told his dad, Papa looks older in the picture. So two good things came out of this one. In heaven, everybody is young. That's a good thing. Huh, Deacon Rigo? Got to be young. The second thing was I liked was we have a lot of family to meet. We are truly blessed as a heavenly community. Number five, this is the one that really got me. One day the child's mom was paying bills. You know, moms are usually the ones paying all the bills. And her son came up to her and said, you never told me I had two sisters. She said, you only have one sister. The boy said, no, I have two sisters. When I was in heaven, I met my other sister. And she kept hugging me. Mom, you know, I do not like a lot of hugging. Turns out that the child's mom had a miscarriage of a girl that was never talked about. When I read this, chills came over me. My own mom had several miscarriages. Years before I was born, she lost a set of twins to a miscarriage. So now I realize when I go to heaven, I am no longer the eldest. I am now a middle child. <laughs> Gotta learn that one. 
All of us could be meeting siblings, aunts, uncles, and grandchildren we never realized we had. Imagine a husband and wife who tried to have children but were unable to. When it is their time to go to heaven, waiting for each of them at the gate could be their heavenly children. How about being an only child? You go to heaven and suddenly you are meeting brothers and sisters. Feel God's love? Jesus has been walking with us throughout our Easter season. He has made us breakfast, taught us to love one another. He taught us that he and the Father are one and that he knows we will need the Holy Spirit to give us the understanding to spread the love and word of God. God's word is our home, heaven. When we receive the Eucharist today, God, help us to open our hearts and our heavenly home to you and let us carry the gospel out into the world.